My name is Ben Knowles from East Coast Yacht Sales. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive about these DPI stern drives from Volvo. We've got Bruce Whitfin here that's going to help educate us on these new drives. Bruce, thanks for coming. Thanks for having yeah, me, Ben. Appreciate it. So at a very high level, Bruce, what is Volvo's objective with these DPI stern drives? So what they're looking to do and what the DPI can do for you is it can give you excellent performance on a bigger, you know, 35, 40 plus foot boat that's a heavier boat, a, you know, a family cruiser style boat. The torque of the diesel, the efficiency of the dual prop stern drive will give you the performance you need. You can trim them up, still go into shallow water, still go to the beach. They're super efficient, super torquey, get up on plane really quick, up on plane you know, at a lower RPM and stay on plane. This is, they call this stern drive the DPI stern drive. How long has this drive been so out for? So the DPI replaced the DPH in 2019. Okay. Volvo did a deep dive on the D4, D6 engine range and the DPI drive. The DPI is a hydraulic clutch versus the old DPH cone clutch where mm -hmm. people have the experience of a clunky shifting stern drive. This is super smooth. It's mm -hmm. got the same transmission as our IPS, a hydraulic transmission. And that allowed us to get more benefits of EVC, like dynamic positioning, the okay. low speed technology, joystick driving, joystick docking. So some of what Volvo has learned from the IPS drives, that technology, some of that technology has trickled down to Absolutely. what is now the DPI drive. Correct. And, and so this is all new above and beyond what the DPH. Correct. Had. Even though I it see. looks like a DPH drive, it's a totally different animal. I see. In the US, stern drives, there's a lot of concerns over these drive systems. Talk to me about how Volvo has addressed some of these concerns. So a couple big hurdles we talk about when we talk about stern drives in the US market. You know, these aren't the stern drives of the 70s, 80s. These are, you know, robust, high-tech machines. The first big hurdle we heard was corrosion. Mm -hmm. So Volvo came out with the ACP system, active corrosion protection that we've been using on IPS for 15 years. Mm -hmm. It's that little black box there between the drives. These drives do not have any sacrificial anodes on them. That ACP system protects the drives from any corrosion. So we've kind of solved that corrosion issue as the first hurdle. So that black box right there almost eliminates the corrosion aspects for correct, these drives. Correct, correct. So um, we do, you'll see on the corners of the boat, there's those Volvo Penta anodes. Mm -hmm. Those are there just in case the guy loses power. If he's sitting his morning, his battery dies, mm -hmm. or the fuse blows, those anodes are just back up I if see. there's a failure with the ACP side. Okay. So in addition to the anti-corrosion protection that you have on here, what other pain points have you guys addressed with these drives? So the drives in the past, the bellows were had an issue. There's a rubber bellows okay. all over the drive shaft. Yep, um, these are just the bellows, these two bellows right here. Yep, there's one up here for the U-joint and yep. the exhaust bellows is down there. Yep. So there are new improved bellows, longer life. There's, we've added, so the problem with the bellows in the past was you could get water inside the bellows. Mm -hmm. The seawater would corrode and rust out the U-joint shaft. Mm -hmm. We've added a water in bellows sensor. Okay. So now yeah. if you do get water and bellows, you get an alarm on your display. It says I got water and bellows. Okay. You can get back, to, whenever you get back to port, you can get it addressed. Mm. We also have a water and oil sensor in the drive. Okay. So the yep. other, another issue in the past was prop seals leaking. Mm -hmm. So we now have a water and oil sensor in the lower units. And part of the trickle down from what previous conversations that you and I have had is the shaft seal technology that you guys developed with the IPS drives. Correct, yeah, this has also. the same prop shaft sealing setup as the IPS 15 and 20. Okay. So yep. we're looking at, you know, 2000 hour life on those seals. Wow, okay, that's significant. With the bellows, how often are you replacing those bellows? The bellows, it's um, two years or 800 hours to change okay. the bellows. So every two years you're removing the stern drives to service, service Correct. the bellows. Correct, yep. yep. And how do you, how do you remove these, these stern um, drives? You basically, you pull the pivot pins. Yep and these cylinder steering pins, and yep. then just disconnect a couple hydraulic lines, and okay. just slide right out. It's just a spline shaft on the end of the U-joint shaft. Okay. Yeah, because I asked you that, because a lot of people get concerned with maintenance right. with stern drives. Whenever you hear about outboards versus diesels, stern drives and whatnot, everyone always is saying, oh, well, 
Right, so part of the whole update Volvo did to the whole D4, D6 DPI line in 2019 was to decrease the cost of ownership. So mm -hmm. the service intervals, so the oil changes are now two years or 200 hours. So if you're a typical pleasure boater doing 50 to 70 hours a year, mm -hmm. you're only you're changing your oil every two years. You know, we've had conversations having customers not change the oil every season, at least in New England, is a pretty foreign, right. so pretty that's, foreign thing. Well, I'm sure people watch Watching this will be thinking that we're right. crazy. And How is that possible? Well, it's just based on the uh, first of all, the new oils, the synthetic oils, yep. last longer. The components, the internal components of the engines, the metal, the materials they're using in the cylinder, the cylinder walls, the cylinder mm -hmm. liners, everything is just new and improved. Pretty foreign concept for you know right. for, for me, but it right. sounds it's going to take some marketing to get people over that, but it. it it's a huge cost of ownership savings. You know, it seems like you guys are looking at this, the outboard market where most of those outboards sold today 150 are 100. Hour, yeah. yep. Yep. So if you're- So compared, if you look at a three year, the first three years of ownership, you can have a significant savings with diesel stern drives over a, a gas outboard. While a servicing of a diesel stern drive that singular servicing may cost a little bit more than an outboard. You're doing it less frequently. You're doing it half the amount of time. That's right. That's pretty, in yeah, which is compelling, yep. right? If you were to factor in fuel burn, That's what right. are you guys seeing for fuel burn savings? You know, anywhere between 30 or 40% less than the same boat with gasoline outboards. Interesting. Yeah, so that's, if you factor in cost of ownership, not just a maintenance cost, singular, but over the course of a Correct. period of time, you guys are saying that it could be less right. to maintain a diesel boat. With the DPI stern drives, you still have the functionalities with at the helm for the user. Yeah, so with the new DPI drive and the hydraulic clutch and the electric steering, we can do uh, dynamic positioning. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to where you want to be, you hit the button on the joystick, the boat will stay there. Yep. We have joystick docking. Yep. We have the new joystick driving. We right. have complete control on the joystick from the um, joystick. We can clutch in, throttle up, drive the boat. We have low speed, which is a great feature. It'll actually, I say slip, it, it sends a pulse to the clutches, so it'll, you can go below idle speed. So, so with can, the low speed, you can really create. Yeah, you can, I use it all the time. I think it's a great feature that we don't talk about enough, but in a crowded marine or a harbor, you can, you know, a boat, this big boat with all this power, you can go at two knots through the mm -hmm. harbor and have complete control. You're not clutching in, clutching out, or running on one engine. Yeah, because with a lot of diesels, when you click into gear, diesel motors move a lot of water, right? right? So right. You, you, by having this low speed mode, you can really yeah. slow the boat down. It's quite a compelling package, and you guys are starting to see in the U.S., some U.S. manufacturers adopt some of these. Yeah, drives. yeah, we're having some boat builders. You know, the whole market is going big outboards for a while, but yeah. we're finding, especially in boats like this, you know, yeah. the family boat, the bigger boat, that the outboards might not be the perfect solution for this. With the diesel stern drives, you get, you know, the Volvo setup, you get all the f benefits of EVC, all the benefits of diesel, the fuel efficiency, the safety. You get your transom back, like on this right. boat, you can have your dinghy back, you can have the kids swimming off the back, so. And you can still trim the drives up yep. like you can you with You can still outboards. go to the beach like you can with the outboards. Yeah, well, appreciate your time, Bruce. Thank you. Thanks for having much. me. Yeah, thanks for the education.